Welcome to the Orthopedic Indications channel, where we discuss medical education for medical sales consultants and reps. That's a great point. Okay, increasingly complex from here. This is uh, Bethany. This is your case. Uh, this late male, late fifties uh, male patient, history of an ankle fracture. I think that was relatively recent. You know, like seven months prior had a poke hole open injury, work-related. This is all outside, so I didn't have a ton of history or a ton of x-rays, but I'll, I'll, and it looked like he was otherwise healthy. So this is his initial x-ray, and I believe, if I understand the timeline correctly, this was one month after surgery, and then I think you had seen him probably like five, six months later, six months after, and this is, I think, when he came in to see you. So you can certainly see... You know, the things are kind of falling into, it looks like there's like a hole on the lateral aspect of the, of the tibia where he's kind of falling into that, into that defect. Um, you know, he's got fixation of the fibula. He's got a syndesmosis that looks a little suspect at this point. What did you, th I mean, I, I, I didn't have, I know you ordered a CT scan. I, it must've been outside and I couldn't find it, but you know, what do you, what was your thoughts kind of looking at this, um, in terms of like why this failed so quickly? Um, well, I think, uh, and I'd be interested to hear what, what you guys think, but I think in some of these ankle fractures, um, let's take infection off the table and say he's not infected, but, um, these like trimals and these ones that have syndesmotic injury, I think there is a component to that lateral tibial plafond and they can get like some necrosis uh, avn of that area and collapse and then you start seeing this <clears throat> and he has widening through the syndesmosis too as this like as his foot goes into valgus and pushes over even more and more so on his ct scan he had a uh, significant uh defect uh, lateral tibial plafond so you think that was possibly there at the time of the injury? Is that what is that what you is that what you're kind of thinking um, on some of these? The, I don't know if it's completely there at the time of the injury, but I think that there is something there at the time of the injury. Like I think that there may be some compromise of that lateral uh, tibial plafond that we aren't really recognizing. I also don't know if you could do anything about it at that point anyway. Just know that it's there. Does if you know that it's there, does it? Do you think it changes anything in terms of maybe how you fix, maybe your syndesmosis? Is that a situation where maybe yeah, I mean, maybe I wouldn't use flexible fixation on this guy. Yeah, more rigid fixation across that. Mm -hmm. His fibula looks maybe a little translated. I don't know if it was you know short or you know that's the other thing you know to it as well. And it's a little hard to say right now because it, things have kind of shifted. Um, uh, but, you know, all the things I think to consider. All right. So ankle fusion versus arthroplasty, take infection off the table. I think his workup was negative, but uh, as you're thinking, you know, leaning towards a fusion, as obviously we're talking about that tonight, but you kind of had the discussion. It sounds like he was kind of okay with the idea of doing a fusion in this case. Yeah, he was okay with doing the fusion. And I think with that bone loss over there, and then, you know, hypothetically speaking, if you're going to do an arthroplasty on this guy, probably it would have had to have been staged, almost like triple staged, right? Yeah. Like stage, take the hardware out, make sure it's not infu not infected. Second stage, re revise and fuse its syndesmosis and get the ankle back underneath itself. And then third is the ankle. Um, yeah, that's kind of, I've, I've wrestled with that question before as well. Uh, it, you know, a triple stage, that's a big, <laughs> that's a, a, something pretty big to bite, bite on. So you used a, this is a kind of an interesting case, I think, because you used a fibular osteotomy to approach it, which we were talking about before a little bit. Uh, so can you take us through kind of like your approach to the fibular osteotomy? I mean, you obviously cut it transversely above, do you cut it in half and flip it out of the way or how are you, how are you doing that? And what do you have like on the table? Like, what do you want to, to do that if you're going that way? So I'll do a lateral incision. Um, I protect the tissues with home ends and I have like a small saw and I'll train, I'll do a transverse cut on the fibula and then I take all the soft tissues off anteriorly off the fibula and book it back on the so on the posterior soft tissues and then I'll take the saw again and remove the inner 
third of the fibula. That's why it's thinner, as you can see there. And that's nice because you can use it for local autograph. Um, the other thing that I'll do sometimes is I'll, um, if I need more structure, I, I think I actually might've done that on this case, but if I need more structure, uh, a piece of fibula often fits very nicely in that hole that you can see there. So I'll just take an additional like centimeter or a centimeter and a half of fibula above as structure graph. Yeah. And then so, that gives me a nice like look at the lateral tibial, that lateral tibial tailor joint. And for me, I find that easier to cut these with the x-ray in the A to P placement and cut it across. It's just that's a personal preference. Like sometimes people are really good at cutting it front to back and they can do it on a lateral x-ray, but I'm not quite as good uh, doing that. So you Bethany, can see- is that, a, is, is, that a, is that the part of the fibular graft in the anterior lateral plafond yeah. right there? Yep. Yeah. So you it came from oh, here, great. right? So you took this little wedge and flipped it right there, you can see. And then you see how she docked it on the medial side here. Yeah, that looks great. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'll fix the lat medial side first because I want that ankle to stay over there. So I'll put those screws in first and then put whatever other fixation we put yeah, in. Yeah, so, you know, and check your hind foot alignment. Make sure that you're in, you know, a little bit of valgus here. So that's one thing we're always kind of looking at as we go through the through the process of fixing everything. So you get it fixed medially. And then now you can see over in the middle here, now I assume you're kind of, you know, buttressing the fibula back onto the, construct there mm -hmm. and then uh cannulated screws for initial compression and reinforced with your is that your dog bone plate yeah uh, you can't get those anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's a great plate um and that's kind of the final construct so you can see restored dorsiflexion a little bit of valgus nice and compressed in this case Fibula is strutted on the lateral side. And these are final post-ops, I think at what, six months or maybe, yeah, probably six months post-op. Nice and solid. Subtalar joint looks good. Position looks excellent. So that's a, so just an example I, of a transfibular approach. I love how you left the, the uh, button from the tightrope in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like... um, so you can talk for a second about that screw, that screw orientation too. So, you know, you saw like what Nick did with his A to P screws and um, the uh, P to A screws on the cannulated screws for this guy, I didn't have really a good posterior lip to put it on. And I um, didn't have really a good anterior lateral place to put a screw top to bottom. So I use off of the lateral process. Mm -hmm. This is a great one to use too, because it's, it's what's nice about it is um, you can shoot it under x-ray and you can get that position right. So you don't have, you're not, like, you know, holding the leg up, the downside of that posterior to anterior screw is you got to hold the leg up. You're shooting it from underneath the bed. It feels like can be really tricky to get. So it's, it's a good technique tip to be able to use that because you can have x-ray in there. You don't have to twist the leg in any funny direction. You're not, you know, looking up backwards. It's a good, it's a good one to use.